assalamu alaikum student uh, i am physics teacher from ibs school now first of all i am just going to tell you about the instructions don't raise hand during lecture ask questions at the end of the lecture in ch uh, chat box only use hand free if you are using mobile and headphone for computer use third is feed your id and password properly with your name and class take care of time for attending the class home tasks should be done in your fair copy of the subject if there is any disconnectivity during the lecture try to join lecture again within 5 to 10 minutes now today i am going to start chapter number 3 remaining part of the kinematics of linear motion the first i will discuss about the acceleration second first equation of motion third second equation of motion third equation of fourth equation of motion and fifth one motion under gravity now first of all i'm going to start about the acceleration acceleration we can say that the rate of change of velocity of a body is called its acceleration mean we can say if an object is going to be start from the rest, then it will increase their velocity. So it means that that is the change in the velocity. Mean the body is going to move from initial velocity to the final velocity. Initial velocity is representing with vi, and final velocity is representing with vf now here first i am going to show the formula of the acceleration so the formula of the acceleration is change in velocity divided by time now in symbolically we can return as a is equal to delta v upon delta t a means acceleration delta v means change in velocity and delta t means time in other we can say that the unit of the acceleration so the si unit of the acceleration is meter per second is square or you can also written as m s raised to the power minus 2 now after that we are just going to uh, drive the formula of the acceleration also we can say the nature of the acceleration the nature of the acceleration we can say it is a vector quantity it means that for any type of the acceleration it required direction whenever the direction is not going to be show it means that it is not said to be the vector quantity so acceleration required direction and this direction is shown by the change in the velocity First of all, we are saying that the statement about the change in the velocity. We can say consider a body whose velocity change from Vi to Vf. Let's suppose this is the body and this body is just going to change their position from this point to move object from that point. It means that it is going to change their initial velocity into the final velocity. Now, for this position, it will take some time, and that time is represented by the small p. Now, hence, we can say as velocity of the body is changing, hence, an acceleration a is produced in it. Mean when the body is going to move from this point to this point it means there is a change in the velocity so it can be written as change in velocity of the body in time delta t I mean delta 
showing change. Delta showing change. So that's why we can say that change in velocity of the body in time, delta t is equal to vf minus vi, and it is represented by delta v. Delta v shows the change in the time. Now, the second one, we can say that if the body is replaced at this point, so here initial velocity is v by, vi. And if it is going on this position, so its velocity will become final. And final velocity is represented by the vf. Now, from point this to this, it will take some time. And that time is represented by the small t. Now, it can also written that, therefore, change in velocity in unit time is equal to delta v upon delta t. Change in velocity in unit time is equal to delta v upon delta t. Now, second one, or we can also written as the rate of change of velocity is equal to delta v over delta t. Now, in other words, we can say since the rate of change of velocity is called acceleration, which is denoted by a and in the formula we can return as a is equal to the delta v over delta t. Also, now we are just going to discuss about types of the acceleration. We can say there are two types of the acceleration. The first one is said to be the positive acceleration and the second is said to be the negative acceleration. Positive acceleration we can say if the, board, if the velocity of a body increases continuously, then the acceleration is said to be positive. Again, I'm repeating, if the velocity of a body increases continuously, then the acceleration is said to be positive. Mean, when the body is going to move from point A to the point B, so its velocity its acceleration is said to be the positive. Otherwise, we can say the negative acceleration. In the negative acceleration mean, if the velocity of a body decreases continuously, then the acceleration is said to be negative, or it also said to be the declaration, or also it can say that retardation and its direction is uploaded mean we can say in the negative acceleration its direction will be negative why because the body is just going to reduce or decrease their velocity that's why it will show in the negative or in other words we can say that is the deceleration or in other words we can say retardation now the next topic is that here we are going to drive the first equation of the motion. First equation of motion is a much more important to solve than numerical. So before going to drive it first, we just have to be select their statement. What this equation is said that. So in the statement first, we can say consider or suppose a body is moving. Suppose a body is moving with initial velocity vi. Suppose a body is moving with initial velocity vi and is undergoing uniform acceleration a for a time t such that its final velocity becomes vf. Now, suppose that this is a body at the rest position. So at this situation, its, its initial velocity will be vi. But when it is going to be changed their place like that, so their velocity will be changed and it will become the final velocity. And final velocity is represented by vf. So due to this situation, it will take some time and that time is represented by a small t. After that, 
we are going to drive it. First of all, we, we can say that the change in velocity of the body in time, change in velocity of the body in time, that can be represented by Vf minus Vi. Are you understand, uh, Israel? Now the next one we can say, therefore, change in velocity in unit time will become Vf, Vf, Vf minus Vi upon T. Therefore, change in, change in velocity in unit time is equal to Vf minus Vi over T. Now, the next we can say that as change in velocity in unit time is called acceleration and it can be represented it can be represented by a is equal to vf minus vi over t so if we want to find out or to make make the v and vi in a uh, separately then first we will shift t on the other side now here t is in division so when we will shift it on the right hand side then it will come into the multiplication or we can say that vf minus vi is equal to at now here we want to make vf as a subject so we just have to shift minus vi on the other side so this minus so so this minus will convert into the plus now it will set that vf is equal to vi plus at so vf is equal to vi plus at is said to be the first equation of motion i hope so student you will understand now we are going to drive the another equation of motion <coughs> and that is set to be the second equation of motion. In the second equation of motion, first we are considering the statement and that statement we can say that suppose a body is moving with an initial velocity vi as compared to previous one. It is just similar like that. But the difference is that and travel with uniform acceleration A for a period of time T. The distance covered by the body in this time is as. I mean, in the previous one, we don't have to show or discuss about the distance. distance. But here in the second equation of motion, we are going to discuss about the distance. And distance is represented by the S. And its final velocity becomes Vf. Let's suppose this is the body 1. And it is placed at a point A. This object is placed at a point A. When it is just going to displace from this point to this point. So its initial velocity will change into the final velocity. Its initial velocity will change into final velocity and it will take some time and that time is represented by the T or we can say that also it will cover some distance and distance is represented by the S. Now on the next we can say since the acceleration now here we can say that acceleration is uniform then the velocity of the body increases or decreases by equal amount in equal interval of time. The velocity changes at a constant rate. Now, the next we can say, therefore, uh, velocity is equal to, average velocity we can say, vi, plus Vf upon 2.
therefore average velocity is said to be vi plus vf over 2. And the formula for the distance traveled that is average velocity multiplied by time. And it can also be written as s is equal to average velocity multiplied by t. s is equal to average velocity multiplied by t. Symbolically, we can represent distance as a s, average velocity as VAB, multiplied by time can be represented by the small t. Now, on the other step, we are just going to substitute their value. Or we can say that they are putting value in equation 1. So, in the previous step, we have discussed average velocity can be represented by VI plus Vf upon 2. So, at the place of average velocity, we will compute Vi plus Vf upon 2. While S will remain same and T will remain same. Here, one thing is the most important thing. That is, you will just write the braces. Because if you will not write the braces, it means that only T will multiply by Vf. But when you insert braces it means that the t will multiply with vi as well as vf now the next step we can say from the first equation of motion we know that vf is equal to vi plus at now here we just have to be we just have to be remove vf because in the equation we don't have Vf. So, we will remove Vf by the first equation of motion. And we can say that Vf is equal to Vi plus At. After that, we will compute at the place of Vf, Vi plus At. So, it will become S is equal to Vi plus Vi plus At multiplied by T over 2. Now here, in the algebra, we can say that if the bases are similar, then we can add their coefficient. So, in the next step, we can say 1vi plus 1vi. That is equal to 2vi plus 80 will remain same upon 2 will remain same. Multiply by t will remain same. Now, after that, we will multiply t with a 2vi plus 80. So, when we will multiply 2vi by t, so it will become 2vit plus, when we will multiply 80 with the t, then it will become 80 square. Upon 2 will remain same. After that, we are just going to partialize it. Partialize means we just have to be separate. Mean, this 2 is also with the 2vit as well as 80 square. So, we can return as 2vit upon 2 plus a t square over 2. Now, these two and these two get cancelled. And we just hear v i t plus a t square over 2. We can also return as 1 upon 2 a t square. I hope so, Swen, you can understand. Now, we are just going to drive the next mean third equation of motion. Now, the third equation of motion, we can say, if the third equation of motion can be obtained by using equation 1 and 2, removing T from, the, from them. So, this is said to be the statement. Now, from the first equation, we can say that, let's suppose this is the body and move from this point to this point. So, here its initial velocity is Vi. And after changing their place, its it, velocity will become Vf. And also, it is just going to cover some distance in S. Or it will take some time. Now, we are just going to write this equation. First, we can say that from first equation, we can say Vf is equal to Vi plus At. This is the first equation of motion. Now we will take a square on both sides, then it will become Vf square is equal to Vi plus At whole square. Now here, 
in this equation, we will apply the perfect square formula, which we have learned uh, a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square. Now here, at the place of a, v having vi, and at the place of b, v having at. So, when we are going to open it, then it can say that vf square is equal to vi square plus 2 from the formula. At the place of a, we will compute vi. At the place of b, we will compute at. Now, plus, we will take the square of the at. Then, we can say that vf square is equal to vi square plus 2 vi at plus a square t square because this square will come over a as well as over t. Now, after that, we just have to take 2 and a as a common. Here 2 is present and a is also present in both of the uh, terms, but 2 is not given. So, to take that 2 as a common, we will divide and multiply 2 so that it cannot be a fact on this equation. So, after that, on the next step, we can take 2a as a common. So, vf square will remain same, vi square will remain same, and here we can say, uh, we will take 2a as a common. So here, when we take 2a as a common, then here we can say that vit will remain plus, after 2, we have just 1 upon 2 will remain same, a square, we can take a as a common, so it has a and t square will, will remain same. So, if we consider it, vit plus half a t square is said to be the second equation of motion. So, we can say from second equation of motion, vit plus half a t square is said to be the s. So, we are just going to remove it and compute s at this plane. Why? We can write vf as it is, vi square as it is, plus 2a as it is, and compute s at this situation. So, it can also be written as, when we will shift vi square on the other side, then it will come into the negative, and 2a as will remain same. So, we can say 2a as is equal to vf square minus vi square. I hope so, Israel. You are just going to try to understand it. Now, after that, we have a, a new uh, topic that is said to be the motion under gravity. Motion under gravity, we can say that when we go through or we drop any object, it is just come into the ground. So, why this object is come into the ground? So, we can say it means that there is some force which is just going to act over the surface of the uh, ground. So, motion under gravity can be defined as motion under gravity refers to the movement of an object whose vertical motion is affected by the presence of gravity. Again, I'm going to repeat it. Motion under gravity refers to the movement of an object whose vertical motion is affected by the presence of gravity. Mean, motion under gravity refers to the movement of an object whose vertical motion is affected by the presence of gravity. It means that due to the gravity, due to the force of the attraction, that's why every object will come down. So, this, uh, we can say, the force that attracts object, the force that attracts object downward is said to be gravity. Mean, we can say that the force which attract object downward that is said to be the gravity. In fact, we can say gravity works towards the center of the earth. Mean, 
all of the objects always come towards the center of the earth. Let's suppose I'm just going to show. I mean, if this object is going to upward, then it is just going to downward as well as if we are going to go through the object, then it will not go to stay at this position. It is just going to come down. Now, we can say, okay, in fact, gravity works towards the center of the Earth. The mass of the object and the gravitational constant determine the magnitude of the gravitational force. This law is given to the Galileo. Galileo is said that when the two different masses of the body uh, drop from a height, if in an isolated system, then their acceleration will remain same. So this value we can say having 9.8 meter per second is five. Acceleration due to gravity is represented. Acceleration due to gravity is represented 9.8 meter per second is five. Let's suppose if just going to drop a ball from a height, so it will come down, and we can say. During each second of fall, the speed of a ball changes by 9.8 meter per second. This part. So let's see at this position, if this is zero and initial velocity is zero meter per second. Why? Right. If it takes one second to come down, so its velocity will become two, and its acceleration due to its acceleration or distance will become 9.8 meter per second. After that, when it reach or take one more second, so it will become two second, and its uh, uh, speed or velocity will become 19.6 meter per second. When it is come much more down, then it will take one more second, then it, its time will become the three second, and its speed is set to be the 29.4 meter per second. So at the end, its track will become the 4 second and V is equal to 339.2 meter per second. So we can see that during each second of fall, the speed of a ball changes 9.8 meter per second. The change in the speed is due to gravity. Mean, this speed is going to change due to gravity because every object it is just going to attack towards the center. Earth is attracting every object towards its center. Now, hence the acceleration in this case is called acceleration due to gravity. So we can say this acceleration is to be the acceleration due to gravity. And Acceleration due to gravity is represented by a small g and its value is 9.8 meter per second as well. Also, it can also be uh, approximate value is 10 meter per second is square. In another word, we can say during the upward motion of the body, which I have showed you in the previous slides, during the upward motion of the object, this attraction causes deceleration in the object whereas the object accelerated during downward during downward motion now upward means when we are going uh, going go through in the upward uh, motion so its direction will be opposite but the value of the acceleration due to gravity will remain same or that is set with the deceleration and it can be represented by nine, minus 9.8 meter per second is square or you can say minus 10 meter per second is square and when it is going to at the highest point so it will not to stay at this position it is just going to come down and that is set to be the downward motion and that acceleration will be plus 9.8 meter per second now, just uh, 
take the screenshot of this whole class. You just have to be some portion is just you have uh, seen in the previous lecture. I'm just going to mention on this on this situation uh, because now we just have to be complete this chapter today. Thank you so much, Israel. Thank you so much.